Hello again. So, uh, third session over. Um, so we had a couple more people sort of join now, which is good. Gradually getting there. Um, so the numbers are starting to build up a little bit. So it's a bit less weird. So that it's not like super empty. Um, although. There are still no like seniors on the regular duty suit just yet, so I I I'm still not had to like lead a class properly just yet. Um, but I'm sure in time it will build up a bit, and I'll uh, get to have a more proactive role there. At the moment, I kind of just uh, help out where needed. Um, I did take the warm up for the ladies kickboxing today which is nice but um, apart from that I've not got any super lead role just yet not until any seniors come in and I'll start taking those classes but we'll see. Um, so something that I thought about how last time I, I was talking about encouragement and how I wanted to try and uh, get into <clears throat> increase my speaking more and stuff through encouraging people more. I did that quite a bit today and I was consciously trying to be aware of it and try and throw it in where I can and I think it was good and it worked well and it made me think of a way that I could step it up even more by not just telling people that they're doing well and encouraging them in that way but also trying to encourage them to push themselves a bit more to try and work a bit harder and to really just go for it like that, that sort of encouragement so at the moment I'm just I was focusing on letting them know that they're doing a good job and that they're doing better than they might think they're doing. But now I'm thinking I might try and work on getting them to push themselves a bit more. Get try and build the skill set by like getting them out of the comfort zone a little bit and raising the bar like that. So that's really mm. so because I've not done any major teaching or class leading just yet I'm kind of running out of things to talk about in the general sense so I thought I'd talk about something else that happened this week uh, so my sensei at my, in my own club sessions that I go to not the ones I'm leading or taking, just the regular as, as a student myself that I'm going to uh, we were doing some Sparring with someone who's doing the black belt because sparring is on the black belt syllabus. There's something you have to do a bit of. There isn't that much sparring at our club, uh, honestly. But at the black belt, you have to do it for a bit. And so we were doing it with him, and then the sensei came in to try and demonstrate what uh, he wanted the, the other student who's a brown belt trying to get black, how he wanted what things he wanted to see in him when he was doing the sparring and so he did a bit with me and then he tried to like kick me or something and I'm not even sure what happened but I think I must have blocked it in some way and he ended up breaking his toe <laughs> basically on me although at the time everyone thought it was just dislocated because it kind of stuck out at a weird angle it looked like it was dislocated so <laughs> Everyone kept trying to like pop it back in when actually it was broken. So, but yeah, so we did that. But it made me think more about sparring and the way we do it. Because, like I said, we don't do it very often in our club. There's no, it's only really on syllabus in that sort of black belt stage. It's not really on the syllabus anywhere else. Occasionally we'll do it if because there's this annual 
competition that's held by the sort of overall uh, British Jiu Jitsu Association. And they have this kind of competition which is involves like uh, minute sparring, then like a couple of seconds clinch where you try and get a throw and then go into ground fighting or if there's no takedown you just go straight into the ground fighting for like two minutes. That's the sort of form that that competition takes. So occasionally when that comes up, we have a couple of people who are interested in that. And we'll do a bit of sparring and swift to practice with them. But otherwise we don't do it very often. I myself have never competed in it because Uh, I don't like competition fighting in the way that you, you have to deliberately train yourself to be limited. You have to train yourself to fight within a certain range. There's a lot of things that you have to that you're not allowed to do. You have to sort of deliberately limit your own imagination and stuff. And I, I don't like the idea of doing that, but. I do think it might be a good experience in other ways and also because we don't do a lot of sparring either I think because I think the value of sparring is that it helps you get used to things like adrenaline and fighting someone who's being deliberately resilient and trying to hurt you back instead of just a placid uh, opponent that's kind of going to let you do stuff to them, where you can practice slowly, but you can't inspire, and you have to do everything full whack, and you have to be wary of uh, what's going to happen to you as well, and it's good experience, and it takes you up a, a bit, because I think a lot of, I think a lot of the issues that people have with traditional martial arts, is that they don't think they're very practical in reality. And I think one of the main reasons for that is because certain martial arts, some of the older traditional ones, don't have that much kind of, of contact sparring in them. So students don't get an opportunity to really try and perform the techniques under pressure. They only practice them in the controlled dojo environment where they're going through each movement at a slower pace. And in a traditional martial art it is important to go through them at a slower pace because they are more technical and require more drilling to sort of understand the movement and how everything works and all the mechanics. But you don't get that many real opportunities to pressure test them and to really try and do them against a resilient opponent and uh, there's this thing called stress compression which is essentially when you get like adrenalized and under a really stressful situation like being attacked in reality your brain sort of just takes shortcuts and skips things out and your overall technical ability shrinks so, say your technical skills here. When you're actually in a life or death fight situation, it goes down to like here. And everything gets sloppy and messy and everything. So, you need to be like here to get to here, so it's not as bad. Or either that, or you need to learn to try and calm yourself under pressure so that the stress compression isn't as big. And I think the sparring really helps with that sort of thing, learning how to be more calm and comfortable in a difficult, stressful situation and learning how to use your techniques uh, for whack in some ways. But you know, sparring still a lot of the time has a lot of like lower contact, like low contact sparring where you're not allowed to uh, strike the head or you're not allowed to hit very hard or you're only allowed striking, you're not allowed to do takedowns and throws and stuff like that. So, I, don't know, I still think it's a useful tool to help train people for that more difficult aspect 
of being able to translate the techniques from the dojo to real life. There's a, it's a difficult boundary to cross, I think, and I think sparring and that kind of pressure testing uh, is a really good way of helping to try and bridge it a bit more. So I don't know. I mean, it works well at black belt level when you start putting everything more together. So I've been listening to this audio book recently. I, I, I'm still reading the business book because it takes me ages to read books. <laughs> But I, I also do listen to audiobooks when I'm driving to work and back. And other times I'm like going to Jiu Jitsu or whatever. Um, and that's why I get through them a lot faster. But I'm currently listening to one called Psycho Cybernetics. Seems pretty interesting. Apparently it is like the sort of the Godfather go to self help book or whatever. And I don't. I, I, I'm not really. I do quite like these sort of self-help type books, although the sort of the word sort of self-help implies that I'm already sort of like a miserable individual trying to desperately get out of some horrible situation. I don't think I, that's not how I see myself at all. I think I'm generally quite uh, positive and happy, uh, but. Uh, I think a lot of my potential as an individual is sort of suppressed by the whole anxiety thing and it makes it harder for me to be my true self and I think I quite like how it seems to s doing the stuff that these types of books uh, advise you to do kind of, kind of helps push me further in that direction that I want to go in. But yeah, it's, I've not got very far into it, but it is very interesting. I think uh, it's probably going to be one that I'd recommend. And I'm only like a short way into it, but I think it's uh, pretty good. And one more thing. I had this idea to perhaps get some sort of small diary type book, just a little book that I can record all my training in, like a sort of workout diary if you want, like in specific detail, like when I go to the gym, exactly what exercises and like weight levels I use and in what order and that sort of thing. I quite like the idea of documenting everything it's kind of why I'm doing these, and you know, just recording my progress. And I thought, because I used to do it with the circuit training, I used to write down how many reps I'd be able to do in like a minute or 30 seconds, and then I'd be able to look at that every time and try and beat it. I have that number now, try and get further, like one more each time, and that worked really well. That really helped me to push myself and get the most out of that kind of circuit style timed exercise so I thought I'd try that similar sort of thing again and record everything I do in detail and so I can look back at it and see what kind of progress I'm really making because I do have a proper diary which I do still kind of record in a vague sense what training I do but uh, I'd rather have a separate one for in detail. So. Um, I think uh, that's everything I want to talk about this week. I can't think of uh, anything else in particular. The sparring sort of thing, something that's been on my mind recently. I was wondering if maybe it'd be better to have heavy body armour type stuff and like proper shoes so you don't break your toes <laughs> like uh, proper body armour type set up and so you can go full contact and go quite heavily at it or in that book I read 
previously combative instruction. It goes through a bunch of different sort of pressure chest drills to kind of all these different scenarios where someone is like really trying to kill you and you've got to try to just keep fighting back and maybe uh, incorporate that into a sparring type environment. Uh, we'll see. So, yeah, until next week. See you.